you know, this isn't my first time to Brownsville, and uh, I've come through here many, many times, stopped here at the library uh, because I did the point-to-point -point, uh, bike ride for a number of years. Uh, so this was the last stop uh, before the end. There's about a 105-mile ride, uh, so we stopped there before the climb up over the hill. Uh, so uh, we always had some some great uh, great people there uh, meeting us and great people uh, that were uh, were involved in that uh, in that uh, charitable ride. So the point to point was for the Vermont Food Bank, uh, which was so important uh, in hundreds of drivers. So it was great to, great to be uh, see this again. But I've never been in this store, uh, and this is truly truly spectacular and makes it all worthwhile. So thank you very much for that. Uh, this is a, a great a time for us all to get together uh, as we recognize the Brownsville Butcher and Pantry's inspiring transformation. Uh, this morning we'll hear more about the power of people coming together with a common vision uh, from a local lead leader who rallied support to purchase and renovate this store as well as to the current store manager. We'll also have a chance uh, to hear a couple of members of my team who helped provide financial and technical support to upgrade the wastewater system and access tax credits uh, to make this all work uh, together. This project was truly a joint effort amongst many. And so I'm pleased to have so many of uh, our partners here together uh, in order to, uh, to talk about uh, the success of this store. Now, as I, know, as I uh, have been told, uh, the Brownsville General Store uh, was opened in 1967, but it hit some tough times. Uh, and in the summer of 2017, the store was forced to close. This left a, a void in this community, in this village. And while some might see a store as just a place to get a cup of coffee, it was much more than that. It had been a gathering spot for neighbors and visitors alike, and it brought the whole town together. So as, as governor, I'm, uh, I'm on the road a lot, and I've had the opportunity to visit many communities as well as many stores along the way. Uh, and I see firsthand uh, the economic realities that exist across the state in all 251 towns, cities, and villages. Unfortunately, along with many farms, we're seeing far too many general stores struggle to stay open. This puts a spotlight on the incredible pressures our villages and small towns are facing from aging infrastructure to fewer young families buying homes and fewer kids in our schools. But this community chose to tackle the challenges head on by developing new creative approaches to age old problems. <coughs> Creating vibrant and welcoming downtowns and villages is critical to keeping young Vermonters here and attracting new families and businesses to Vermont. That's one of the reasons I wanted to join you today to celebrate in this venture. Together, this community has proven that solutions start from the ground up at the local level. And you've shown how that vision can, can and should be reinforced with help from us at the state. This type of community spirit and drive, a commitment to lifting yourselves up, is exactly what we need to see in our rural communities across the state. So I want to give a special thanks to those committed community leaders who understood the importance of this Vermont General Store, as well as the store managers who roll up their sleeves and come to work every day to serve their customers, the town officials who realize a strong infrastructure means strong communities, and to our state agencies who provide uh, financial and technical support to this town's redevelopment efforts. I thank you all for your dedication, your investment, your energy in making sure our general stores continue to be the pillar of our communities. So I'm pleased at this point uh, to welcome Chris Nesbitt, the board chair from Friends of the Brownsville General Store. Thank you, Governor Scott. On behalf of the Brownsville Butcher and Pantry, the Scotty Outdoors, the town of West Windsor, those joining us today from the Alpha Bridge School, you're amazing, and so is Governor Scott. So thank you all for turning out today. This official visit 
recognizes and we really appreciate what it offers us the opportunity to do is to show how when government and citizens, as you've said, come together with a common purpose to improve a community, not only like Brownsville, but any Vermont town. If we can do it here, anybody can do it. In fact, we're sharing the story of our journey with stores in Albany, Callis, and Tassville. While we're gathered here to celebrate the Brownsville Butcher and Pantry, I'm going to share briefly two related town success stories. In 2012, Brownsville lost its skiing mountain to mismanagement and bankruptcy. In 2016, 2017, our general store failed and was closed. Together, they represented two of our town's most fundamental economic and social anchors. Today, with the support from state, local government, private enterprise, and Brownsville residents, we have successfully reestablished both, albeit in very different forms from their predecessors, and that's the key. In 2015, <coughs> Scutney Outdoors, or AO as we refer to it, was founded as a nonprofit with the intent of creating a simple rope tow but the community was prepared to fund and support much more. Today, AO is a vibrant four-season hub and center for lovers of nature and the outdoors. Visitors can enjoy public access to our trails, forest, and fields for biking and hiking, trail running, alpine skiing, snow tubing, snowshoeing, backcountry and equestrian recreation. The Escutney Outdoor Center just on the shoulder of the mountain, is a brand new building at the base of the mountain, and it has become an important gathering place for a wide variety of activities, both large and small. The shuttering of the Brownsville General Store in 2017, just as AO was beginning to have a positive impact, was a blow to the whole community. Like most general stores, it was a social hub, as the governor has referred to it a place where you would always run into your neighbors and friends. But the store's owners at that time had an increasingly difficult time making the store work with an outdated business model. So it was not a surprise when the doors closed, but nonetheless a shock. Within a year, a group in town had formed to see if we could find a way to create a new and better Brownsville store. Just as the case, just as in the case of AO, the community stepped up, not only in terms of the money, which was augmented by the state of Vermont village tax credits with an award of $54,000, but the community came together with the money required to rebuild the store, but also with volunteers ready to help in the refurbishment efforts. Of course, the biggest challenge was going to be to find someone with the knowledge, the energy, and a viable business plan to create a successful general store for today's challenging market conditions. And then along came Peter Veronconi and Lauren Stevens. From the start, Peter and Lauren had a clear vision of what they wanted to offer as an alternative model for a general store. A store with a cafe that would provide uniquely flavorful foods, and I hope you will all partake of some of their wonderful baked goods before you leave today. Sourced from local ingredients, a deli with fresh cut meats and poultry, as well as seafood shipped directly from New England purveyors multiple times a week. There would be ready-made meals, local cheeses, artisanal breads. They wanted to offer wine, local craft beers from Vermont breweries, staple and dry goods, alongside vegetables and things that you wouldn't normally find in a general store, spices, cumin. So I hope you'll all, as you're here today, gather, look, and maybe even shop a little bit. We'd love to sell something today. So uh, thank you all for coming. And Governor Scott, 
on behalf of the Brownsville community, we're proud of the transformation that so many have contributed to and that you have, and your administration have helped us with and over these past several years. So we're proud to have you here today as a leader of the state government who has a genuine, heartfelt focus on supporting small towns. So we thank you. Remembrances, uh, not to have uh, the students outshine us, but we, we do have a book about the general store, and we have a sweatshirt for you here from the Brownsville Butcher and Pantry. Oh, really nice. Yeah, and so you can put that on on one of your bike rides and, and show it off with pride. Thank you very much. See you back. Look at that. Yeah, to add to that, we have one of our hats as well as a long sleeve t shirt for your next point to point ride. Very nice. Well, my wife did that, but you're welcome to take it off. <laughs> she insisted. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I got to show this. There it is. And we invite everyone to the mountain. So at this point, I'd like to really bring up the star of the show today, Peter and Lauren Stevens, our dear friends and store operators. Governor Scott, thank you again for visiting the village of Brownsville, town of West Windsor today. Your time here shows a sincere commitment to our region and community's well-being. We have now celebrated one year uh, of business here in Brownsville. In that year, we have gathered along the way what seems a lifetime of stories, from being embraced by a community of once strangers to now dear friends, building a network of partners, vendors, farmers, craftsmen that all continually support and shape our marketplace. Our goal when this project began was not to ignore the history, but embrace the importance of a town's general store and with a purpose of relevance and to first identify its community's needs, nourishment, procurement of necessity and amenities, and lastly, a place of gathering. Quality, value, and locality are characteristics that make us unique in terms of both our products and services, and additional, an investment in the growth and development of our entrepreneurs in our region. We intend to com or continually collaborate and invest in our uh, region's farmers, tradesmen, and businesses. What makes our services unique is the familiarity to attention to detail. We continue to encourage our staff to greet every guest as though they're welcoming them to their own home, and treat every request as though it was of the paramount importance. Our staff is unique, but in the sense of enthusiasm for their careers and knowing their sense of place in the community. We believe that this is the future key to motivating and st staying behind our mission. Living, let alone starting a business in a rural setting such as Vermont can have its limitations and challenges. Some of the challenges we faced in building and opening a business in Vermont were related to local and state regulations and the fact that many of these regulations are one size fits all. We view this as an area of improvement that could lead uh, to more opportunity and growth in, in, for small business in Vermont, with more of a system of tail that was tailored to a diverse business such as ours. We've created a great amount of momentum in these past years. However, it is important in the years to come that we're able to find new areas of development and progress while retaining our town's uh, core values. We attribute the success, to an, the success to an immense amount of support we have received from our community our friends, families, and dedicated staff. And a lot of hard work. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're thankful for all the support, enthusiasm, and hunger that Brownsville has. <laughs> the town we call home, what we hope in the future are the resources that shape us and the region and state that we, that we hope to prove a new blueprint for rural living. We thank everyone for coming and today we support Brownsville and the state of Vermont. 
I'd now like to introduce our Natural Resources Secretary, Julie Moore. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> In the world of natural resources, it's often the case that what's underground supports what's above ground. Um, from deep roots holding up Vermont's trademark maples to underground aquifers that provide drinking water to Vermonters. The things we can't see are essential to the things we can. And village water and wastewater systems are no different. That below ground infrastructure can make or break our villages. Wastewater infrastructure tends to be both out of sight and out of mind, but investing in this infrastructure is essential to supporting the growth of existing businesses and community centers, as well as opportunities like the one we are here in today, uh, for new businesses and organizations to sustainably take shape. But in, more than, but in Vermont, more than 200 of our downtowns and village centers lack community wastewater disposal systems, creating a barrier to infill development and revitalization projects. As state government, we are providing communities with technical assistance and help accessing grants and low interest loans for these sorts of core infrastructure investments, which in turn support exciting revitalization projects like the Brownsville Butcher and Pantry. <coughs> Here in Brownsville, the Agency of Natural Resources and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development partnered with the town of West Windsor to help communi the community transition its wastewater infrastructure after Tropical Storm Irene badly damaged two systems here in the village, including the one at the fire department next door, and the pipe connecting the Brownsville General Store to the Escutney Mountain Resort sewer system. The town of West Windsor prioritized village wastewater by making wastewater system upgrades the highest priority in its town plan, and this prioritization helped the town receive $2.4 million in grants and loans to purchase the sewer system that had served the resort and ex extend the system to the village, providing sewer service for all in 2016. Today we're standing in this beautiful, lively space that is possible due in part to what lies beneath the surface. surface. And in, a com in combination with a strong community vision, entrepreneurial store managers, and a creative business model, core infrastructure investments in a village wastewater system help revive this store, and we know that these sorts of investments can and will help other places looking to do similar work across Vermont. And with that, I'd please turn it over to Josh Greenberg from the Agency of Commerce. Thank you, uh, Josh Hanford, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, I guess I'm the closer, but probably more like uh, the end of the bench since all the success has been celebrated already. Um, you know, what I really want to highlight is the, the efforts that the town, the success that, that's come about from um, all the great effort that, that's come to bear here. Um, the tax credits is one of the pieces that uh, our department uh, put into this project, $50,000 that leveraged another $450,000. Uh, Caitlin Corkins over there really deserves the credit for managing that program statewide. So thank you, Caitlin. Uh, as well as Nathan Cleveland over there manages the CDBG program, which had some disaster money uh, involved in that sewer project, um, which just struck me that uh, when at the time that Irene hit this town, uh, the school didn't have ability to serve hot lunch because there was no septic system and after this investment they can enjoy hot lunch these days. Um, but you know this town is really showing a lot of resiliency. Uh, if you look back to you know the resort closing, the lodge burning down, Irene wiping out the septics along here. Um, what has happened since? You know you've had an emerging outdoor recreation economy with the trails. There's over 100 miles of single mountain, single back, single track mountain bike trails just up the road there, this rope tow, um, this beautiful store. It's really about that um, village revitalization that we need more of all across Vermont. And I'm just happy to be a very small part of this. I think the tax credits, the village and downtown tax credits are a key part of this. And thank the governor and thank the legislators here for continuing to support that program. It really does make a difference and leverages lots of private investment. And, um, really breeds success. So thanks for, for having us. Thank you. So at this point in time, we'd love to take uh, some questions from anyone here about this, uh, this project and some of the uh, provisions that we've been able to provide uh, from the state. 
if there are. <laughs> and if there aren't, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you really do have a wonderful community here. And, and I can't say enough about how a grassroots support is so necessary in developing who you want to be. Uh, because once you do that, then we can assist you. It can't be from the top down. It has to be from the bottom up. And you've proven here uh, with so many people coming up for this is just, uh, just a sign of the strength of this community and the resilience of this community and what you can become. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to coming back and seeing uh, all the other things uh, that you have in mind uh, for this community as well. So thank you very much for inviting me. There is one question. Sure. He has a question over is here. Is it stressful? Is it stressful being governor? Uh, is it stre <laughs> the, the question is, is it stressful being governor? <laughs> <laughs> Some days it's more stressful than others. Uh, but I can say uh, we all have stress in our lives in different ways. Uh, when, when Irene hit this community, I'm sure there was a lot of stress uh, amongst the community members. Uh, when you were developing, uh, when you were trying to decide to do this and then uh, took that step and, and moved forward, I'm sure there's been a bit of stress in your lives as well. And it's stress every morning uh, when, you, when you open up uh, about what you need to do. Uh, so we all, we all have it. Uh, it's how we deal with it. And, uh, and how we prioritize that. And, uh, and I've looked for, uh, for times in my life uh, when I start feeling sorry for myself, the long days, the, uh, the, the uh, somewhat uh, challenging, um, uh, I guess, social media uh, <laughs> that is so negative at times. And what we're seeing across our, our country, uh, the polarization that exists. And uh, so I try and reflect and look at the good. And uh, when I see good, I try and focus on that, and I see good here. Uh, and this is something we have to remind ourselves each and every day. There's far more that unites us than divides us, and we have to look for the good in the world and not and not stress out about the bad, because the good will outweigh the bad. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Well, again, thank you so much, and I do look forward to seeing everything you have to offer here. <laughs> I can already tell this is going to be a favorite stop for me. <laughs> Having seen some of the, you know, it's, it's some of my weakness is the big right. goods. So. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you. Nice to see you. Pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you.